afternoon folks. This is our 66th weekly town hall gathering to raise awareness about the illegal 10-year political persecution and incarceration of Julian Assange. Julian Assange is being persecuted in the UK for his role in revealing US war crimes to the world. The campaign to free Julian is certainly gaining momentum. This week, the leader of the opposition, Anthony Albanese, stated at a Labor caucus meeting on Tuesday, enough is enough. And I can't see what is served by keeping him incarcerated. The Green Senator Peter Wish Wilson, speaking in the Australian Senate chamber, appealed strongly to the US President Joe Biden and his Attorney General Merrick Garland to urgently review and walk away from seeking the extradition of Julian Assange. This is fantastic news and clearly exerts increasing pressure on the Australian government to act on Julian's behalf. We stand here confident in our belief that Julian Assange should be free, that everyone needs to know that Julian should be free and that everyone needs to be demanding that Julian is free. Julian Assange exercised his human right to inform the world about atrocities that have been committed against humanity. Our right to free speech ex extends to our right to know the truth about our governments. The ongoing imprisonment of Julian Assange must be viewed as a direct attack on our right to free speech. This attack on free speech must be stopped. Free speech is fundamentally important and we must keep fighting for Julian's freedom. One underlying problem preventing humanity flourishing is the systematic suppression of the truth. Censorship is the idea that someone has the right to dictate to the rest of us without pushback from an informed public. It is vital that we do not consent to the idea of censorship. There is still much work to be done to free Julian Assange, but we must make sure that the political persecution of a journalist can never happen again. When so-called authorities decide to silence, smear and torture a completely truthful and ethical and award-winning journalist, it is in our interest to hold those so-called authorities to account. While there are signs that things are moving in a favourable direction, we must note the mainstream media continue to perpetuate long debunked smears against Julian Assange's character. Everyone must understand that Julian Assange is completely innocent and these smears are a ploy to impede his path to freedom. It is likely that the truth about Julian will be known to everyone and when that happens, the smearers of Julian will fall silent but we must act with urgency. The conditions under which he is detained are cruel and detrimental to his immune system and his mental well-being. He may die in prison. The sooner we can get him out of there, the better. We must keep working to maintain the truth about Julian Assange. He is completely innocent and a spectacular hero of honest journalism. 
I urge you to stand up for your right to know the truth and stand up for Julian Assange's right to inform us. Thank you, Julian Assange. On behalf of all Australians, I would like to thank you, Julian. You have done us all a great service. Even those of us that don't appreciate you, you have done us all a service. Thank you. She was interviewed this week by Pablo Navarrete about her experience in the Old Bailey while trying to report on Julian's case. She said the observers were kept in an area where the temperatures were kept below 16 degrees as stipulated by the judge. And they had to wear hats and gloves and coats to try and keep warm. It was hard to hear the proceedings due to a constant buzzing noise. She said that Julian, an innocent man, faced the same conditions while being held inside a glass box. To talk to his lawyers, he had to get down on his knees and yell through a crack to try and get attention, and then he had to yell to speak to them. Julian suffering from osteoporosis, which has been exacerbated from years of complete lack of sunlight exposure at the embassy and in Belmarsh prison. He'd previously cracked a rib while tying a shoelace. Crack ribs are excruciatingly painful. You can imagine how brittle his bones are and how fragile this man is. Julian Assange partner, Stella Morris, posted online, Julian, who is an unconvicted, innocent man, remains on remand at the high security Belmarsh prison, where he's been for over 500 days. He should be home with his kids, but he was refused bail. There are many terrible things about Belmarsh, not least how cold it has been over the last couple of weeks. And he's isolated in a cell practically all day. However, the most pressing problem for Julian is that conditions in detention continue to obstruct his ability to prepare his legal case, a case on which his life depends. He is denied proper access to his lawyers. His legal team is unable to do in-person visits due to COVID-19. And there are months of waiting lists for video conferencing. There are delays in legal papers reaching him and the laptop issued by UK authorities for the court case is read only. It has no text editing and the keys are glued down to prevent him from typing. 
This makes it all but impossible for him to provide adequate feedback to his team with regards to the materials required for the appeal. The campaign is now at its most crucial point. We cannot afford to have the Magistrates Court ruling reversed on appeal. Biden will soon appoint its new Attorney General and this will be important to raise the pressure on the Biden administration to live up to its commitments to defend press freedom and drop the charges against Julian. The Obama administration, of which Biden was vice president, decided not to pursue charges against Julian because it is recognised that to do so would be a wider attack on press freedom. Julian, she said, should be warm at home with me and his two sons. Max just turned two and we were forced to spend yet another birthday apart. Julian is really suffering with the cold weather. Even though winter clothes were sent to him in early October, Julian has still not received them. When he goes outside in the exercise yard, he's having to layer up his existing clothes, which are not warm enough. This is the UK, who we thought was the bastion of justice and freedom. And they give a man, a journalist, a, a computer with the keyboard glued down so he can't type. They keep him in a, a prison, in a, a wing where there's COVID and where there's inadequate heating, and yet they haven't given him his warm clothes. I, I don't know what you think, but I think every Australian should be standing up to protect this man. I believe it's un-Australian to let him languish in his prison cell. Amnesty no longer consider Alexei Navani a prisoner of conscience after receiving past comments by him that amount to hate speech. He's made remarks which are strongly anti-immigration. Yet, Maurice Payne's statement this month was that Australia is deeply concerned by the Russian authorities' arrest of, of Alexei. And in January, Maurice Payne said on Assange, Australia is not a party to the case and will continue to respect the ongoing legal process, including the UK justice system's considerations of applications for release or any appeals. Basically, she's saying she won't do anything to lift a finger to assist an Australian citizen, a journalist, and yet she'll call out the Russian government for a man who's been called a Nazi. I, I just don't understand why the Australian government continues to be the lapdog of the US and the UK. They need to stand up and call for the release of Australian journalist, Walkley Award winner, Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange.
here every Friday from 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. to talk to you about what's happening with Julian Assange, acclaimed publisher, a father, uh, a son, an Australian, and um, the editor of WikiLeaks, and what's happening to him in Burmarsh High Security Prison. One of the aspects which is horrendous is the fact that Julian has been subjected to many years of psychological torture. And even more horrendous is that our government knows about it and has known about it for many years. You might remember that in the 2000 uh, Senate estimates hearing, our Foreign Affairs Minister, Maurice Payne, uh, was questioned about the treatment of Julian Assange during the extradition hearing in England. And she said to those present at the Senate hearing, oh well, you know, Julian's treatment is no different to that of any other UK prisoner. Julian has been treated as a terrorist in Belmarsh, in the UK, even though he faces no ch charges whatsoever under UK law. He has been exposed to maximum security prison, being away from any human contact for over 20, 23 hours a day. That is not standard, that is certainly not routine. He's being treated as a terrorist. And this is a acclaimed publisher who has received so many awards internationally and who has been so many times nominated for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Julian doesn't have any criminal history, no custodial sentence, there is no history of risk of violence, but he's been detained under the harshest and most punitive conditions that UK law enforcement has to offer. Isolated, in cramped conditions, uh, in conditions that are covered, infested, away from your family, with a laptop where you cannot type, all of the keys have been stuck with glue down, cemented, uh, without communicating with your lawyers, without having contact with your family. That is the situation that Julian Assange lives at the moment, even though we have an order from a magistrate that says that he must not be extradited to the US. But because the US is appealing, then Julian remains in that high security prison. The Human Rights Institute of the International Bar Association, those are just lawyers, issued a statement saying that they had a widespread concern over the ill treatment of Mr. Assange during his extradition hearing. They described the condition that Julian was taken to every day to the court uh, the fact that he was searched, uh, stripped naked, sometimes 11 times on the one day, shocking and excessive. The International Bar Association has also said that the treatment of Julian Assange is reminiscent of the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. You remember those, don't you? Prisoners exposed to dog bites, uh, naked, uh, with hoods on their heads, chained. The psychological effect on Julian Assange is similar to that of prisoners in Abu Ghraib. This is extraordinary that our um, Foreign Affairs Minister will consider that such treatment being normal or um, like it for any other prisoner. It is not normal to treat anyone as a terrorist. It is not normal to claim that a publisher is a spy. It is not normal to treat journalists as terrorists and spies. Or is it the new normal in Australia? Is this what we're going to live like in the years coming in Australia? Is that what our journalists are facing? There are 75 
pieces of legislation in Australia at the moment which permit the criminalization and prosecution, the persecution and silencing of journalists and their sources. And that is why this is so concerning. If the extradition of Julian Assange proceeds, it will be seen as a model for every other country in the world that wishes to silence journalists, that wishes to silence you, sir, and me. You wouldn't be able to be shouting out there if you are taken to prison, mister. You wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to speak to you. No one would, because we would simply be silenced, be imprisoned, be persecuted, and we will have charges against us ad infinitum. It would be retaliation on every aspect of our life, which is what Julian has faced. And this is wrong. This is non-democratic. This is simply unacceptable. And that's why parliamentarians in Australia are now saying so. Mr. Albanese, the opposition leader, has just said enough is enough. Mr. Peter, uh, Senator uh, Wish Wilson, has said so, on so many occasions that we must do everything necessary to secure Julian Assange's release. We must bring him home. It is shameful that we keep silent about it. It is shameful that we don't give Julian Assange all of the support that he needs. It is shameful that our government doesn't take active action to obtain Julian's release as it did with other journalists in the past, as it's done with other personalities, Australian personalities. Now, people are saying, if we don't hear about it, it's simply because something, ha something has happened, the government has done something wrong, if we don't hear about it. And it's true, you know, because we are being prevented from telling everyone about the wrongdoings committed by our governments. And that is why Julian is in prison because he was courageous, because he uh, took action and publicized what was happening in Iraq, what was happening in Afghanistan, and our government's participation in those countries. So we say enough is enough. Let's bring Julian Assange home. Let's, let's stop the torture, the psychological torture, physical restraints, and the imprisonment of a um, of a publisher, of a journalist, of a man of honesty, of a man who has suffered enough. Enough is enough. Thank you.
politics in the pub on Tuesday will be on Assange and WikiLeaks and the whole case and what to do, what we should be doing. Tuesday 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Free Julian. It's Tuesday 6 p.m. at the Hotel Harry on Wentworth Avenue. Hotel Harry, Wentworth Avenue, Surrey Hills. Not far from Central, not far from Museum Station. It's the one that goes off Oxford Street down to Central. So it's Hotel Harry, it's on the corner of Goulburn and Wentworth Avenue and everyone is welcome. It's also going to be in Zoom. So if you uh, Google, uh, if you Google uh, politics in the pub, you will get there and you can be on Zoom. Scott Ludlam will be speaking. He's an excellent supporter of Julian Assange and Justice and he edited the magnificent book that was published recently. Free! Free! Julian Assange! Free! 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 There's only one decision, no expedition. There's only one easy decision, no expedition. It is only a simple decision, no expedition. It is only the honest and courageous decision, no expedition. It is the only thing It is the only thing that the UK government should do. No expedition. It is the only thing that all democratic people should do. No expedition. It is what we want. No expedition. Free free. Julian Assange. Free free. Julian Assange. Bring him back home. Julian Assange. In my... Oh mate, Julian Assange!